Hey there viewers and welcome back to the self-made auto channel. Got us a 2004 Suzuki Vitara. The big 25 that uh, came in yesterday. Money lights on. Customer told me it had a transmission problem, which indeed it did at a P1740 stored in it. I went ahead and fixed that. Simple fix. Had a wire shorted the ground under the dash where it rubbed through on a bracket. But I also noticed when it came in, it had an EVAP code in it. And the lady says, you know, she's aware of that, been dealing with that for years, tighten the gas cap, you know, that old story. Asked her if she'd like me to look at that while it was in, and she did. Went ahead and smoked it yesterday with Ready Smoke, and I'll show you guys what I found. It's leaking out of the canister vent valve. You know, no big deal, no big surprise. The big surprise was, you know, obviously Suzuki being a bankrupt car company, the part is no longer available, and it's not available aftermarket either. Uh, I did call our Suzuki dealer where they still have you know limited parts available and you know gave them the VIN and this one's no longer made. Did some poking, uh, aftermarket, all sorts of places, Rock Auto, you know, Nap Advance, all around. The simple Googling to no avail. Couldn't find anything that was available, even though people have them listed. So some days you need to, what do they say, adapt, improvise, and overcome. And I think that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you what I think is going to be our potential fix because if they can't fix that, then the light doesn't go out and in New York State the car is junk because now you can't get an inspection. So what we'll do first is I'm going to hook back into the purge valve here. Uh, oh, wrong hose, fella. Right hose, wrong side. So I'm going to hook the line off the purge valve. Then we're going to hook our smoke machine back up to it even though I know where the leak is. I'll show you guys, plus we're going to need it hooked up to, uh, you know, verify or repair. So we'll get that done. I was kind of surprised, just so I had it running for quite a while, or the uh, smoke tester on it. Lots and lots of smoke coming out of the machine. Not a bit of smoke coming out of that vent valve. It took, it took me a minute to find it. I could, I could actually hear the leak, but I could not see the sucker. It's kind of... Uh, Concerning, so I sprayed a little soapy water on it. The problem was pretty evident, so that's probably what I'll do today, also, just to demonstrate to you what's up with it. Let's see here. So, I'm not even going to turn the smoke on. With the uh, ready smoke, when you open up the flow gauge on it, it blows just you know, there. So, you can hear that. So, you don't have to use smoke, let's say you're just doing a simple you know, you know, as a system sealing, you can just use the flow gauge and then the pressure gauge and, you know, go that route. You identify you have a leak, then boom, you know, hit the smoke button and rock and roll. And here we are. So underneath the vehicle, pretty, pretty standard EVAP system, a lot like GM, you know, Ford, some others. Uh, just your purge and seal system, your purge and vent solenoid canister. So uh, very basic. Uh, this hose here is where the purge line comes in from the engine. Uh, this hose goes to the tank. And this hose actually just goes up to a filter. So here's your canister vent valve uh, right here. And that's going to allow the fresh air in and out of the canister. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the, I got the all tail down here. I'm going to go to the canister vent valve. We're going to take and just close this off. Let's see here. Oops. Bear with me just a moment. We will close it so you can hear it close. So that's opening and closing. And then let this be a good lesson to you that just because your vent valve clicks, it does not mean that it's good. Now I've got the smoke machine hanging up front here. I did, like I said, I just got air pressure going into it. Let me just see if it's got enough pressure on the system right now. And it does. Hopefully you guys can see the, the bubbles growing there. So it's you know quite obvious where the where the leak is. However, like I say, this valve is no longer available. At least when I talked to Suzuki and the and the bit of poking that I did. So the dilemma is, you know, what do you what do you do now? Uh, I you know we've got some options, and I'm going to show you the option I came up with. So what I'd like to try to do is see if we can't loosen this canister, the whole thing up just a little bit. I don't know if that's going to work or not. There's four bolts that hold it on, so if they start popping, we'll stop. I think she might have a little bit of hope. One out of four. Eh, 
two for two. Two for Tuesday. That one is looking bad. be three-eighths now. I'll be jiggered. That's all. Should be able to get it right down where we can see it better now. I'm thinking. Delicate, everything here is pretty, pretty fragile. That canister line there. Then our wiring harness that runs into it. What I want to do is see if I can't unplug it. All right. Well, let me get some tools. I'm just going to stick a piece of wire around this. It's just kind of hanging by the wiring harness right now. I just want to stick something on here to keep it from stretching on the harness. The harness is uh, attached right there, so it's not really tugging too bad. And I want to see if we can't get the vent valve itself loose. I'm not so sure it's going to happen. All the surprises today, and what came right out. That one, however, is not. That one might also be three eighths at this point. Well, looky, looky. Some days it better be lucky than it is good. And then, I'm going to unhook this right from the canister. Oh, come on. All right. Looks a lot like the vent valves they put on the Hondas, but the Honda ones bolt right to uh, right to the canister. So I'm gonna take and unhook this. I see I might be in a little bit of trouble already. I kind of assume this. I'm gonna pull the. Uh, I just want to take the other hose off. Somebody's out there driving power wheels. Easy. So there's our canister vent valve. This is the one that I can't get. It has a Denso number on it. I should try Googling that, see if you know maybe perhaps it fits a you know different make and model, but so that's it. So what I want to do, uh, you know, kind of try to save these people some money and save them the time of trying to locate a used one because chances are you're not gonna get a good you know used one in New York State. Just for the heck of it, I did Google the number that's on it, and it comes up with a, a Denso purge solenoid. Uh, it doesn't even look like this, so that's kind of peculiar. What I'm going to do is we're going to adapt. So this is just your standard GM purge solenoid. Now, obviously, I don't believe the connectors are the same, but I do know that these uh, GM purge solenoids come with this jumper harness, uh, you know, to plug into, you know, the factory harness on GM. So my thought is get one of these standard, just, you know, open, close. This one has a filter in it. But we have the wiring harness that comes with it. And these are pretty inexpensive, like less than 40 bucks. We'll cut the harness. We'll adapt it to the factory harness. And this works exactly the same. It should have the same amperage draw as this one. So the only kind of dilemmas we have are the inlet sizes are slightly different, which, you know, this hose is pretty malleable. And given the situation, you know, we can just put a hose clamp on it and it will, you know, tighten down around these. I did notice that, you know, this inner rib 
you know, we can put the hose up on it, slip it over that rib, and then clamp it down, and I think we'll be fine. And it should save them, you know, a pile of money, and like I say, having to, you know, dump the car just because the engine light's on. Uh, the other dilemma is there is, you know, no mounting bracket for it, of course. You know, you could get a mounting bracket off of GM and probably adapt it to this, but these things are quite light, you know, pretty lightweight. I think we'll be able to stick it right up here on its side. Uh, it'll be fine, you know, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. It doesn't matter how you mount these. Uh, and, yeah, that's it. That's my plan. Uh, we'll just see if this is going to be the best way to put that in. I think it will be. So like I say, we're just going to slide it up over the rib portion so that rib's back here and then just slide the hose clamp on it, tighten it down. I can't really think of a better solution. And like I say, I mean, I just hate to see these people have to junk this car. I mean, the frame, frame's not rotted on it yet. Might better do, you know, do something like this. So there, that hose fits. I think we can just slip it back up onto the canister. And then put that clamp back on it. And then I'm not really concerned about you know this canister vent valve just you know laying in here on top of this bracket. It'll be underneath this hose. It should be you know pinched in there pretty well. And then on the filter side of it here, you know, this side doesn't really necessarily need to be sealed you know perfectly, leak wise. stick this clamp on just do the same thing slip that up over and tighten up our clamp and then let's see we got our wire harness down here we can uh, stick this back up and make our connection get our wire Get our wire holder off this side. Even when this valve was available from Suzuki, I think the dealer said it was, I don't know, my cost on it was like a 136 something. I think it retailed for like 150s. So it's a kind of an expensive little valve for what it is, you know. Alright, there's that. Get the nuts spun back up on here. Get this tightened up and I think we'll be in good shape. Actually, probably be to our benefit to shorten this hose a little bit here. So I think we will do that. Probably be just as easy to take it off this end. Get the kink out of it, anyways. Just to make sure we're not going to have any issues. I'm not sure it up. Oh, probably whack two inches off it. Get a little bit of lube there. Come on, baby, there she goes. Always have to have a plan B, folks. At least an automotive repair. All right. See, I'm not so worried about tying it down. I mean, it's it's not going anywhere. And then now, I do have the key on. We'll find out which one. This power really doesn't matter. this harness and there will not be a connector here which is well I mean I'll have the connector up here but you know as far as the factory connector it's going bye-bye oh, let's see if 
find something somewhat shiny. That's pretty much impossible. Let's see if I can't. What's up, Miss Though? I need some confidential information Ooh. from you. Alright. Alright, so it looks like blue with black is our power, so blue with black is going to go to our red wire on here. I'll talk top secret like to Mrs. O and we'll get that fixed up. going to use some crimp and seal connectors here so we'll put them on give them a crimp Well, what we'll do, you just got to make sure that, you know, the customer's aware of the part number in case, you know, in the future this one ever goes bad. I'll just make sure it's on the uh, invoice. It's a very readily available purge solenoid, super popular. I'd say quite inexpensive for, you know, for what it is. It's about the same price as just this electrical connector. Because I was looking at a different purge solenoid or, valve, or vet valve that uh, GM makes which is essentially just the vent valve portion that goes into this filter. They're really cheap, they're like 15 bucks. But then the harness was like 30 some dollars. I'm like, well, I'll just get this one with the filter on it. And then just have double filtration. Because this hose, I believe, just comes up and goes into the frame. If I remember it right, uh, let's see. Yeah, oh, actually it goes up to a big filter box, so. Up there behind the left rear tire. So that connection's made. I'll let these uh, solidify. We'll get the uh, slinky tube back over here, the harness cover loom, wire loom, whatever they call it. We'll get that back on there as soon as those harden. Uh, and these are the crimp and seals that actually have like the sealant in them that oozes out. So they work pretty well. skin until we should be able to hear it open and close but we got old machine gun Josh over there well, you guys can hear it now let me get you a little closer try this again <laughs> jerk wad right, we'll try it again here we go all right so it opens and closes now what we're going to do is we're going to close it, we're going to turn the air back on, 
we're going to watch the flow gauge and make sure it comes down all the way to zero and then make sure the system can hold pressure. So I'm going to take the uh, vent valve is closed. So we're going to open up the air, let it flow. And what we'll be watching over here is the actual flow gauge. Now as the system starts to seal, the, this little float ball is going to come down. Once it's all the way down, we can, you know, we can take and then at that point seal it off. And we can already tell right now it's already holding pressure. We have about what, 10 inches of water on there. And you know, centrally, uh, it should hold almost indefinitely. So we'll let her flow, but you can see the flow gauge is already starting to come down just in that short period of time. We're down to about 10 thousandths. That last little bit from 10 to, you know, once it hits zero, that does take a little while. And then we should also be able to see uh, on the scan tool here, we should have a fuel tank pressure data PID on this one. Let's see, somewhere's here. Uh, fuel tank pressure 0.46 PSI. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but that's our data PID there. We don't have, yeah, fuel gas tank 68 degrees. So that is, this is something to be mindful of too, your, your fuel temperature. So let's say you brought in a car and you know you, you filled the system with smoke or air, whatever you're doing, it's holding pressure. And then all of a sudden you start seeing the pressure go, uh, you know, start to go higher because you have the system sealed. Well, as that fuel is volatile, the hotter it is, you know, it's going to start building pressure on its own. And a lot of times I'll use that for, you know, just for leak purpose testing, you know, drive the car. I know the gas tank's hot, close the purge, close the vent valve and you should start building tank pressure almost immediately. And uh, you can see, I don't know if you guys can see it, but our flow gauge is all the way at the bottom. And a good way to remember like the fuel volatility and how it you know, expands and contracts, just think about like your gas can that you have for your lawnmower in the shed. You know, you go out there on a hot day, the thing's swelled up like a balloon, and then the next morning when it's cold, the, you know, the sides are sucked in on it. And that's kind of how your natural vacuum leak detection systems work. You know, they're dependent on that temperature change. So uh, we're going to take and just uh, close this off. I'm confident that we don't have any leaks, but I'll let it sit for a while. We will see, you know, we're at 0.46, you know, PSI. I'm confident. All right. I think that's going to be it on this one, folks. These people should be quite happy uh, because we are the third shop that they've had it to. Uh, the first two shops diagnosed it as a TCM, Transmission Control Module. And the ironic part about that is this car does not even have a TCM. <laughs> so the TCMs were only on the uh, Suzuki's that had the 270. This one just has a regular engine control module that you know takes care of both functions. And then uh, the last shop they had it at told me they needed a body control module, uh, which the car does not have either. So that's you know, at that point I asked me, you know, do you want me to just diagnose it? And that's how we got where we're at today. Uh, I guess that's neither here nor there, but it is fixed now. I'm happy with it. Just going to go run a drive cycle. I don't know if I'm going to get the EVAP monitor to run, hopefully. But I'm not giving the car back until it has. Just because that's how I roll. I like to 100% verify my repairs before I give them back. All right, folks, that's it. Just got back from my test drive, and when you know it, I got every monitor except for the EVAP, which is kind of to be expected, or at least I expected that. Anyhow, so no big surprise, I'll run it again tomorrow after it sits overnight, and it should go through then. The good news is there is no pending codes, transmission works as it should. Uh, I should have showed you got that fixed, that was kind of a, that was a quick one. Uh, it didn't take long to find the problem. Uh, anyhow. In this situation, parts weren't available, or at least easily available, I should say, because I'm sure somebody in the comment box will find one of these somewhere on a shelf. Uh, but it is what it is. It's fixed, and it works. Uh, so we're happy with that, and it should last them um, a good long while. And if it breaks, it's an inexpensive, you know, easy repair in the future. So uh, I guess that's it. Go down there, click subscribe ring that bell down there to get the notifications sent to your device wherever your notifications go find us on patreon facebook and just remember viewers if i can do it you can do it thanks for watching